It's 2016, a 24-year-old girl named Charlie Javis identifies a problem in the American college system. She finds out that on an average, most students graduate with over $30,000 in student loans. She then starts a fintech business to fix this problem. The startup was aimed at targeting Gen Z college students. The purpose of the startup was to improve the student loan application process for young Americans seeking financial aid, which also helped these students in negotiating with colleges to receive more financial aid. The startup was named as Frank and basically it helped the students to get a scholarship. The business community liked this idea and Frank was easily able to attract investors. These are some of the big investors who had invested in the startup. You can pause the video and read the list. The idea was great and the startup was successful. Charlie Javis gets on the Forbes 30 under 30 list for fighting for a worthwhile cause. She and her startup Frank both became famous. Frank attracted attention of JP Morgan Chase, which is one of the world's oldest, largest and the best known financial institution. Charlie Javis had claimed that Frank had over 4 million customers, which is why JP Morgan Chase was interested in acquiring the company. And in 2021, JPMC acquired Frank for $175 million. JPMC wanted to get their hands on the 4 million customer base of Frank so that it could use them and sell financial products that were lucrative. That is, in some sense, JP Morgan paid Frank $175 million for an email list. After the acquisition, Charlie Javis was appointed as a managing director at JP Morgan overseeing student-focused products. So far, everything sounds fine, but here comes a twist. In January, after the acquisition was done and dusted, the bank decided to spam Frank's users with a campaign, probably to get them to buy some financial product which would make the bank some money. So it randomly picked 400,000 users from the list Frank had provided during the due diligence process and sent out emails. But the campaign went horribly wrong. Only 28% of the emails were delivered and less than 1% of the delivered emails were opened. That's when JPMC smelled something suspicious. It launched an investigation. In the investigation, JPMC found out that Frank did not have the 4 million customer base that it had claimed. In fact, the actual number of customers that Frank had was less than 300,000, a massively low number from the 4 million that was disclosed. JPMC got scammed by Charlie Javis. Now, you are probably wondering that how on earth did a massive bank like JP Morgan miss the red flags before cuffing all that money? Well, let's just say that Charlie Javis outplayed the banking giant. Frank did not have the 4 million customers that it had claimed. It only had 300,000. But you don't get $175 million for that, right? So what did Charlie Javis do? Basically, she inflated the user base with fake data. But how did she do it? Charlie Javis and her company's chief growth officer Olivier Armour reached out to a company called ASL Marketing, a firm that claimed to have most comprehensive, accurate and responsive data of high school students, college students and young adults available anywhere. It could give Frank exactly what it needed. They paid ASL $105,000 and bought a list of 4.5 million students. They then found a data science professor, a teacher at a college in New York City and took his help to create fake lists. Javis asked the professor to create addresses for the fake students. The data science professor in an email asked Javis, I can't seem to find addresses in my raw files. Should I attempt to fabricate them? Javis responded saying, I just wouldn't want the street to not exist in the state. Basically, the addresses could be fake, but she didn't want a non-existent XYZ street name to pop up. It had to be real. But the professor replied that real addresses may not be doable. Javis came up with an idea. She figured out that if we can't do real addresses, what's the best we can do for that? We can try a unique ID. Basically, she fooled JP Morgan by convincing them that the unique IDs in the list was to protect the confidentiality of the student users, that the unique IDs were tied to real addresses in the backend, and the bank believed her. Then came the email IDs. In an email, the data science professor asked Javis, 
डू यू वॉन्ट मी टू मेक फेक ई मेल आई डीज और डू यू वॉन्ट यूनिक आई डीज आफ्टर ऑल जेविस रिस्पॉन्डेड विल द फेक ई मेल्स लुक रियल विथ एन आई चेक और बेटर टू यूज यूनिक आई डी द डेटा साइंस प्रोफेसर रिप्लाइड दे विल लुक फेक सो लेट्स यूज यूनिक आई डी सो या द यूनिक आई डीज इमर्ज अगेन इट ऑल सीम्स सो जेनुन सो वेन जे पी एम सी डेट द ड्यू डेलीजेंस फ्रैंक पास विथ फ्लाइंग कलर्स When the professor sent Javis a bill of thirteen thousand three hundred dollars for the work done, he was quite elaborate. He had described in the bill that he had performed college major generation that included creating first names, last names, emails, phone numbers. Quite an honest man, yeah. But Javis freaked out. A sharp auditor would definitely ask questions about this, so she asked him to remove it all. Instead she asked him to send a simple one line invoice saying for data analysis. She even sent him a bonus of $4700 probably to keep his mouth shut. And the professor's response was, "Wow, thank you. Here is the new invoice." Yeah, the fraud didn't really matter anymore. And Javis sweetened the deal further. She even offered the professor a full-time position at JPMC after the buyout. Now hiring the man into the same bank he helped defraud is quite a killer move. It all sounds crazy to be true, but that is how a Forbes 30 under 30 winner fooled one of the America's largest banks. Now to sum it up, Frank paid a total of $193,000 to ASL, the professor, and others for a list of fake email addresses. and then sold that list to JP Morgan Chase for 175 million dollars definitely a contender for scam of the year what are your views on this let me know in the comment section